called the prosperity gospel, which argues that wealth is a sign of God's favour and donations will result in wealth coming back to you. Th that idea sometimes takes the form of seed faith, the notion that donations are seeds that you will one day get to harvest. Uh, let me show you that in action. The size of your seed will determine the size of your harvest. I don't understand why, but there's something happens at a level where people step into faith and give $1,000 that don't happen at other levels. You're going to have a breakthrough through this $273 seed. All you've got is $1,000. Listen, that's not enough money anyway to buy the house. You're trying to get in the apartment. You're trying to buy the house. That's not enough money anyway. You get to that phone and you put that seed in the ground and watch God work it out. The, the, the argument is, sow your money in the ground and you will reap returns multiple times over. Except, as an investment, you'd be better off burying your money in the actual ground. <laughs> because at least that way, there is a chance your dog may dig it up and give it back to you one day. <laughs> Good boy. But, but it can get even more predatory. Because if, say, you don't have $1,000 or perhaps have significant credit card debts, seed faith can still work for you. I have a feeling that somebody that wants a credit card debt wiped out, that if you'll use your faith as you sow, as you sow the thousand on a credit card, as you use your faith, as you use your faith, God's going to wipe out your credit card indebtedness. Think about that. That is the equivalent of saying the key to you losing weight lies at the bottom of this giant Costco bulk bag of peanut butter M&Ms. Go find it. It's definitely down there. And all of this, all of this would be amusing if the targets of these messages were not often vulnerable people like Bonnie Parker. She did not seek medical treatment for cancer, instead choosing to sow money into Kenneth Copeland's church. And I'll let her daughter pick it up from there. I started finding notebooks. Not long after she passed away, she believed, and I know she believed, because it's in the notebooks, that if she sowed enough seed, which was money, um, the, the greater amount of seed that you sow, according to them, um, the better chance you have. The better chance you have of getting Bonnie Parker gave thousands of dollars to the Copeland's Church because she believed it was her best chance of beating cancer. And you might think, well, that's crazy. But it's not an unreasonable interpretation of the Copeland's preachings. Gloria Copeland sells numerous products on healing through faith and has been sceptical in the past about going to the doctor. We know what's wrong with you. You've got cancer. The bad news is, we don't know what to do about it, except give you some poison that will make you sicker. <laughs> now, which do you want to do? Do you want to do that, or you want to sit here on Saturday morning, hear the Word of God, and let faith come into your heart and be healed? <laughs> Hallelujah.
Good morning, morning, y'all. Thank God the word word works. works. We're so blessed. I mean, God's done so many neat things for me and Pat. I am some kind of excited about that Honduran coffee, seven pounds of it. That's the best that I've ever had. We've had it for breakfast the last two or three mornings. And oh my gosh, it is really, come on, it's really good. Good. The rest of the breakfast is good too, but that coffee is out of sight. But I'll be drinking it for the rest of this year because God did exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or Or think. think. Now, the coffee didn't come because of God's love and grace. The coffee came because of my faith in God and ask to receive. Now, let me share this with you. There's four ideas that the average Christian might have. Somebody say, well, you ran out of coffee. Well, it was the Lord. He was telling you, you didn't need coffee. That's a bunch of bull. The second idea is, well, you know, the Lord was trying to teach you something and make you do without coffee until you repented or or something. Well, now that's a bunch of bull. Yeah. Or how about this one? Well, you know, um, God knows everything, and, and in his grace, he knew that you was going to need it, so it will be provided. No, there's another one. Ask. Ask. And you shall receive. I'll go with you. Ask, and and it shall shall be given given unto unto you. you. So it's the word of God says faith without corresponding actions is dead, but also faith without appropriating the word of God in your life by asking is useless. And, and, and I got to say this, Pat, help me. You know, God's done things for you that I wouldn't have done. You know, gave you all those clothes here about a year ago and, and, you know, gave you a porter pot in the wilderness. Those things are not important to me, but my coffee. Oh, now you're dealing with something real important. Here's the point. God is not a respecter of persons. He will do for you what you make a request of him to do. And this is what the Bible says. Make your request known, help me, unto unto God. God. You don't have to call your friends. You don't have to write an appeal letter. You go to the Father and say, Father, I need coffee. Or, Father, I need some more clothes. Or, Father, I need a porta pot in the wilderness. It doesn't matter. What matters is you know that God loves you enough that he will answer your prayers. And whenever you go to him, he will always help me here. Bless Bless you. you. Your time. you got about 30 seconds. Well, people talk about seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. And yes, but he tells us how to seek first the kingdom. That, That word seek actually means to require of or inquire of. He comes on down in Matthew 7, 7 and says, so ask and it shall be given unto you. And that's the way you go to the kingdom and receive out of the kingdom. And you believe you receive according to Mark eleven twenty four, And then it says, it shall be given unto you. In John 16, it says, and he will grant it unto you. It's all a free gift. And the only way God can be fair to all of his children is to leave it up to you. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So if you haven't been receiving them, it's simply because you haven't been asking or believing you receive them. It's very simple. He made it very simple. He gave us simple instructions. He couldn't have made it any more simple. But ask and it shall be given unto you. And he says for everyone, and I like to add this, every one of my children that ask, receives. So go ask the Father. Make a list. Just write down a list like a grocery list of the things you desire for the Father to do. His ears are open to your prayers. His arm is stretched out to bless you today. And he will do it, Pat. Exceeding Exceeding abundantly abundantly above above. all you can ask or think. Let him do it. Y'all have a great day. Jesus is Lord and the The Word word works. works.